Yo! What up, y'all? Welcome back. Today's a pretty serious video. Not a lot of, not a lot of BS. You know what I mean? Uh, I have been uh, wanting to share this story with you guys. It's very touching. Uh, it pertains to what we all do: duck hunting, goose hunting, um, and the dangers of doing it. And first off, I want to say this has nothing to do with guns. It has nothing to do with shotguns, bows anything gun related right that's the topic of this story it's a beautiful morning beautiful sitting at like right at 50 degrees absolutely gorgeous so figured we would come in the lodge a little quieter in here it's pretty windy out so i've been on the phone talking to a lot of great folks about possibly booking a hunt right to come here stay in the lodge hunt central kansas with me here at sand hill flyways by the way we do have some availability left uh, we have room for a lot of twos. Two guys, I can put two guys about anywhere November through through January. So, if you're interested in coming to Sand Hill, all you gotta do, sandhillflyways.com, fill out the inquiry to book form, and we'll get you all fixed up. I'd love to see y'all here. All right, you guys know, uh, I'm always, uh, I'm always preaching, uh, gun safety, hunting safety, um, for the most part, you know, especially at the end of every <clears throat> of every video, especially if it's a hunt and it's cold out, snowy, icy, whatever, I'm always giving you my safety tips. Um, and that's because I truly do care. I, uh, I know that me um, talking about these safety issues to you guys uh, is a good reminder for myself. And sometimes all it takes... Um, for us as human beings is to just have a reminder to hear something from somebody that we trust and it could save one of our lives or someone else's life or we could help save someone else's life one <clears throat> one day in a certain circumstance okay so this is what I'm getting at we're, we're just gonna get right into it um, <clears throat> like I said I've been having a lot of calls about people wanting to look into Booking a hunting trip, right? Well, this here, um, this is uh, my buddy Tyler. Big shout out to you, Tyler. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, real quickly, I'm gonna play it, um, and then I'm gonna go through the back end of the story because when I heard it, I was shocked. And then I called him and I got the rest of the story. So I'll go into the rest of the story after you guys listen to this. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? I'm gonna hold the phone up to the microphone so you all can hear it. Hey, Bobby, my name's Tyler Baker. I live up here in Alaska. Um, looking to do a guided trip next year. Me and my buddy, I um, had a life changing experience the other day. I uh, fell out of a boat and waders and I was stuck in the water for two and a half hours and almost died. It was borderline hypothermic. One, two boys picked me up. I couldn't function. And, um, but me and my buddy, I'm just going to phone with him and we we're talking about doing a guided trip. And he's like, why don't you call Bobby? And here I am. Uh, I want to make it happen. And I just, I need to know the price and date could have been a year a next year hunt not this year but uh shoot me a call back at 980 so <clears throat> that's the short version so he's in alaska he uh he guides like uh he guides bear or something up there fishing trips i believe charters fishing trips him and his grandfather uh he sound like he had a smaller boat smaller duck boat not real big him and his grandfather uh, went out to an island on a big, big water, uh, hunted. Uh, they ended up having two sailor ducks um, that were way off, that had gotten just floated off, you know. So he was like, Paul, stay here. You can start picking up decoys. I'm going to go grab these two ducks. I'll be right back. Well, he ripped off and went around the bend, and his grandpa couldn't see him anymore, and he was way out in the water. He was headed to go get the first floating duck that he seen, and by the sounds of it, what happened, he got spit out of the boat. So I don't know if he hit, you know, 
a big wave and it spit him out, but he got spit out and a lot of his belongings got spit out as well. And the boat, the engine never shut off, it just kept going, okay? He's in a lake, he's not in a marsh where he can stand up, he can't touch and he's in waders. And I'm like, so you were swimming? And he was like, yeah. I was like, what'd you do? How in the heck? I was like, how far from the bank were you? He was like, oh, Bob, way too far. He was like, I, if I would have tried to swim to the bank, I would have died. I was like, what'd you do? He was like, off in the distance, like right away, within the first 30 seconds of being in the water, he spotted one of his, you know, five gallon fuel containers floating in the water. He said it was 200 yards away. He said he swam 200 yards. He said, by the way, the water temperature, this is Alaska, was already 39 degrees, okay? He said he swam 200 yards to the fuel container, emptied the fuel container out, and then bear hugged the fuel container for two and a half hours, okay? This is easy for us to talk about, but can you imagine, right? So really big water at that hour mark, you know, hour and a half, grandpa's starting to get worried. There's zero cellular reception on this island, okay? So Paul's trying to flag anybody down that he can see. Literally, it's BFE, so no one's around. It's Alaska. There, it's not like public land here where there's 100 people, right? He finally gets through, calls like uh, search and rescue, they're on the way, and then luckily at the two and a half hour mark, two boys happened to see Tyler floating and went and rescued him. He said, Bob, they said that I was so close to, to being done another 15, 20 minutes and I would have been done with hypothermia. And <clears throat> his story I think is such a staple, such a staple in the duck hunting, waterfowl hunting world, no matter if it's here in the States, if you're overseas, if you're in Alaska, if you're in Canada, anywhere, anywhere, big rivers, N Nebraska, around Omaha, the Platte River, the Missouri River, the Missouri River is scary. It is a beast. If there's floating ice chunks, big ones on the Missouri, and it's foggy, don't put your damn boat in there, right? So, his conditions, the weather conditions, everything was perfect. He didn't have to worry about ice. He didn't have to worry about the, the boat being overweight. He just got spit out of that boat. And I'm like, man, how'd you get spit out? He's like, man, I don't know. I was just ripping a little too hard. I was too used to the boat. He said, honestly, I was just too comfortable with what I was doing. I, I, was, I was pushing it too hard. So, like I always say, and I'm not, I'm just trying to be an advocate for this. Um, this could happen to me. This could happen to any of us, right? This was a complete accident. But guys, it's always a crucial reminder to all of us. 99.9% .9 of the time, hunting related accidents, whether it's deaths, injury accidents, drownings, anything, it has nothing to do with a gun. And, and the big media theory and the people that don't hunt, their theory is guns are dangerous. That's how people die hunting. No, people die hunting because of drownings. That is the biggest, most, I promise you, the, the highest rate of death is due to drowning. And it could, it, they could be elk hunting uh, and having to cross a lake on a boat and something happened. So it's not just duck hunting or goose hunting, but duck and goose hunting by far takes the cake when you're talking about drowning accidents. I know this is not a crazy video. This isn't me out shooting a 410 and making a freaking viral whatever. That I don't care about that. I don't care how many views this gets, but the world and whoever watches this needs to hear it. And we need to spread this information. If you hear this and you have sons, or if you hear this and, you have, and you're 17 with 10 hunting buddies, Make them watch this video. Make everyone watch this video. Make kids watch this video. All you dads, make all everyone that you can watch this video and hear his story because it is a very gentle, right now, gentle reminder of what something really bad could happen. 
really, really bad. And, and it overloading a boat, guys. If it says, if your John boat says two persons or 500 pounds, right? Go buy that. If you load it down and you're only out of the water that far and you know that it gets 20 foot, 10 foot deep, you need to take some stuff out. You have to. If it's real thick ice and you know that you have to break ice to get where you need to go and it's 20 foot deep and you're loaded down or you're not even loaded down or you're by yourself, whatever, think twice. All it takes is getting up on the ice and it tipping. Okay? Water is the most dangerous thing in what we do as waterfowl hunters. And, and we all have to remember that. Um, I hope this video uh, eventually does save some lives, man. And, and makes people just like myself, just like you guys, all think twice. Um, because a duck is not worth your life. It is not worth your life. It's not worth your dog's life. It's not worth your son's life. It's not worth your best friend's life. If you're out there with a buddy and you guys are 18 and a little wild, I know I've been there, and buddy's like, ah, I'll be fine. I'm a man, you know that. I'm gonna go get that duck in my waders and I'll be fine. And you're like, no, just don't. We'll get it here in a little bit with, with the boat or whatever, right? Just use your brain. It, this can get bad fast. It, this isn't just whitetail hunting where you Walk in with your bow, you sit in your tree stand. Yeah, you can fall out of tree stands, that happens. But there's so many more elements. There's so many more uncontrollable elements when you're talking about waterfowl hunting on water, any water, okay? I've heard horror stories about people dumping boats in the middle of lakes and there's their dog. They're trying to save their dog and they're not even worried about their own life. Can you imagine being in that situation? It's a situation that you do not want to be in, and neither do I. So please, guys, a duck is not worth your life. Take it easy out there. It's just now starting to get cold. We're mid-October. All you northern states, you're cold. Your water temperature is now really cold. It's in the 40s probably. So just take it into consideration. Put it in the old memory bank. If you got to, If you got to hunt from the bank somewhere and not take the boat out, do it. Okay, be safe. Do not overload the boats. Big shout out to Tyler. After uh, when I called him at the end of the conversation, I was like, do you mind if I share your story? I think that your story could help a lot of other people. He was like, absolutely, Bobby. I would, I would, I would actually really enjoy if you did that. Because you could tell, uh, you could tell in the voicemail, man, his voice got real shaky. And on the phone, man, he, he about cried a couple times. And I would too, like... Um, that that is a totally life-changing situation he but you know what he did do he said uh, a week later him and his paw went back out to that spot or said he went out solo he said i took it easy he was like now i have life jackets everywhere he said now i wear a life jacket whenever i'm in the boat he said i don't care if it's 90 degrees out i have a life jacket and i think that's a good point guys Guys, 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 guys. Number one, if you're in waders in a boat, you need to have a belt around your waist really tight. Because if you do fall in, that belt is going to help from water going down into your legs. And it's going to be buoyant, okay? You're going to have air trapped in your legs once you get in that water because of that tight belt. Everybody needs to wear a waist belt with waders, okay? Number one. Number two, when you get in the boat, put on a life jacket. You're going to be in the dark anyways. No need to try to look freaking cool. Put on a life jacket. Your mama would thank you. Number three, again, use your head. So about all I have to say about this, I just wanted to get it out there, spread this story. I think it's a great story. It's a horrible story, but it ended very well. Like I was saying, he went out on a solo hunt, put on his life jacket. He was scared to death. He said he shot like a redhead and a blue wing till or something. And he was like, I got my, my redemption. And, and I, he was like, I felt like I had to go out there and do it just so I wouldn't be scared, you know, going forward. He was like, I had to knock that fear out of me and understand that you, I can be safer. You know, I can be safer and things will be better. Big shout out to you, Tyler. Thank you for calling me. 
Um, there's a lot of these stories that don't get talked about. And I, I am very blessed that you called and shared yours because you might have just, you might have saved some lives today. And uh, again, it, it's just a simple reminder. It's just a simple reminder. So the last thing uh, I want to do is promote something that I love and that something that you guys love, hunting. And then something bad happened to you or I while doing what we love, right? I really care for all you guys, uh, and I want to help. I have always wanted to help. I'm a father, and I'm 36 years old. I'm not 20. I'm not a kid. I have kids. <laughs> but uh, all you guys, please share this video. Share it, share it, share it. I don't care how, how you share it. Share it on Instagram. Screenshot it. Share it on your Instagram story. Tag me. Please, let's get this video in front of of the eyes of the people that need to see it. I mean it, guys. Um, this needs to happen every year. A video like this needs to pop off at the beginning of every waterfowl season just to help people have a good reminder on how to be safe in the cold water.